Hey everyone, this is Nan. I am going to teach you how to make little belted balls. So before I do that, I want to show you what you got to need for protection. What this is, is an, a special needle belters thimble. You can get all different types, but this is the most popular one. It's from Japan. And what you do is you just put your finger on it. Because what you'll also need if you're doing this is, this is a pad. You can see that this is a styrofoam pad. This one's from um, Japan, but uh, you can get all different types. You can use the ones, the green ones that they have in Joann's so that everything um, you can get it locally. So what you do is you take this and you take, this is what a ball will look like when it's almost, when it's not quite perfect, but what you do is you take a fluff, oop, wrong fluff, take a fluff of, of, um, fluff, uh, excuse me, this is wool, and it, I don't even, I think, I don't know exactly which sheep this is from, but basically it's a really good one for not only needle felting, but for wet felting, because there's two ways to make, two ways to make um, needle felted balls. One is just to needle felt it, and the other one is to wet felt it, which is this one right here. We're not going to show you how to do this one, but I can describe it to you. But it looks really nice when you do the wet felting, but it takes forever to dry. So to make your balls, you just go like this, and you're going to take one of your needles, this one I have one of these, it's, you know, depending on the gauge, I use the, the lowest one and I think that's the thickest one. And you just, what you're going to do is you're going to just keep on turning until you get a ball shape. And you just keep on turning and turning and turning until it starts looking like a ball. This takes a few minutes, and I don't want to show you all how to do that, but basically you just keep, you can see it's kind of following into a ball, and it gets to look like this. So it looks like this. So it's all it's a ball size, and you basically want to make it a little bit more perfect, so you're just going to refine it in order to make sure that it is perfectly ball-shaped. Now, at this time, when you do get it perfectly balled and you like the shape, if you want to make it stronger because it isn't it is pretty strong when you're all done with this like here's here's one that is needle felted and it, if you squeeze it it's pretty hard to squeeze so it's definitely a, you know definitely pretty hard to make for your mats but if you want to make it like this one which is wet felted what you do here is when it's at this stage you take a small amount of of dishwasher soap and a hot, hot water, and you're gonna um, run it under the tap with the dishwasher soap, and you, and you basically go like this, and you're gonna make it um, so it's a little bit more perfect than what it is here. And then you, what you do is you put it in a strainer, and you take boiling hot water, and you pour the boiling hot water on it, and then you swirl it around the strainer, and it gets really nice and perfect like that, see? However, this is still wet, so you have to kind of wait until it dries. But what, so that's just kind of how you do it, and if you need to have more um, direction on that, let me know, and I'll show you. <laughs> anyway, so it's drying right now in the sun over there. See, it's sun drying. Anyways, so what this also is about is trying to figure out what needle is the best needle I have a few of these over here to see if this would work you know to make a garland so what I've done these are just some of the guys oh this guy's not finished yet but here's some ah, they're flying all over here so there's a couple ways to do this um, let me show you the different needles that I have I have a couple and one I just bought and I'm really trying to think I really want to try this one here it is this is called huh? this is called the felters needle and it's carved and what you know what you can do is you can do it when it's at this stage and, and it goes really nicely through at this stage so you don't even have to push it or anything like that now this guy because it's wet it's gonna be a, it's, it might be a little bit harder yeah just a little bit more harder and when it really dries it's gonna be really hard to do but there's these types it's a felter's needle but you could also do what's called a dial needle you can see it right here and here's the eye but I have an even bigger doll needle too if we wanted to play with that this is ooh, pretty big so what I would think I, since most people don't get this size most people get the larger size and this one is a I think a size 
what is it, 20 or so? But you get a bigger hook, and then what you do in order to string these, what I just found, and I'm kind of excited about this, is there is this floss called, uh, it's DM DMC floss, and it's 100% wool. And what they do is they use this for, um, how do we describe it? They use it for tapestry mostly. And so what I'm going to try here is I'm going to try to get to string these. So the thing about it is the needle, the needle head, and I might have to do something a little bit more with this. Let's try this guy. You might, that's the bad thing about this one is you need a really big head in order to do that. Uh, or you may need a needle threader. I may have to get my needle threader out. Uh, okay, well that one's not working either. Ah, this is a huge, huge head. Um, hopefully it'll work. It'll work, but the fuzz is not playing well. All right, so here we have it in a needle. This is the dowel needle. Let's see if this is gonna work. So I'm gonna bring it back like this, and, it, and let's just say, why are you using? Why you're probably asking me, why am I using yarn and not twine? You can use yarn, yarn, but I got this for like a ridiculously cheap, like 75 cents. I got a whole thing. And the nice thing about the yarn is if you're going to make a rug, which by the way, this is, ah, this is rug batting, backing, excuse me. And um, I'm going to try to make some, I'm going to play around with this. Anyways, so if you get the wool and if you wanted to wet felt it like this, if you get them all in a string and you put them all together, you can boil all of these at once. And then it will be nice and tight together. Also, I got the wool because you can use this in needle felting. So, okay. So we have this guy, we have that. And we're gonna try to string these balls together. And the needle is really thick, so it goes in a lot better this way. Woohoo! Oh, I gotta get these guys undone. Oh. So there we have it on the actual thread. Okay, let me get that little towel out if I can. All right, so one of the things that probably people, when you're doing a garland, you're probably, it will probably stay this way, but and if you really want it to stay a certain way, I would suggest doing, um, uh, take that needle out, doing something like this, a knot, because if you want it to not move, you would really like to keep it there. Like if you like it in a specific way. So, and then you just do the knot on either side. And if you pull it, you should have the knot disappear. And same thing over here. Oh, let's take the needle off. So same thing over here. If you did a knot, you gotta do it really close. Maybe I should have done it the other way. But if you do a knot, uh, and make sure it's really close. Ah, that's not too close. but point is it won't move so I if I did a little bit better and I probably could needle felt this one in let's see yep there we go so I can needle felt it in a little bit more in order to have it disappear and there we go now what I could also do here at this point is if I had a whole whole thing of them I could wet felt them and make them really nice and pretty like this if you can see that so let's try actually putting the needle in through this guy. Let's see, even though it's wet. I need my needle again. Not my other needle. Where'd it go? Anyways, did it disappear? Oh, there it is now. Okay, it seemed to have disappeared. What did I do with it? Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. So again, ow, let's see, needles hurt. You could just go ahead and thread it. How I thread it is I'm just twisting it and again, this is yarn. So just because it says in a nice little package, you, if you had some, if you had wool yarn just hanging out somewhere, and you wanted to try this, why not? You know. So okay, I'm taking the wet needle, the wet needle. This is the wet needle one. Excuse me, the wet felted one. So it's really nice and pretty and perfect, and not as fuzzy. And so I'm putting this through. Yeah, it's getting hard to put it through. So you really got to push. Ah, come on. Ugh. Yeah, this is really hard. And that's, okay, there we go. Whew. That's the reason why 
when the harder it is, it's actually pretty nice. And I don't know if people know about why we may wet felt something. I don't know. In, and see, it's all misshapen because I pulled so hard. Um, and it's wet. So why we kind of, it should have been let to dry, really, if just so you know. So probably, but it's really hard. As you saw, when I did my first experimentation with this, I used this needle and it went through right away. It was no problem. But... It was, but when I started using the thicker needle, like this one, it's pretty thick. Whoop, ow, and it went away. Um, the thicker the needle, the harder it was, but that was also to the eye size in there as well. However, I could have probably used a needle threader and it would probably would have worked well. So what you can do now is if you wanted to, you can let it dry and then if you wanted to re-soak these to just make them all nice and crunchy, you can if you wanted to. So there's my little demonstration. If you're gonna do anything like this, or if you wanted to, and if I'm gonna probably do one of these guys, do a little, I'm gonna try to do a mat. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but if you wanted to, if you have any questions, please leave additional comments in the email string and I will talk to y'all soon. Uh, thanks guys and happy felting. Bye.